Hello everyone, my name is AJ, and I haven't come up with a good intro yet. Today, I'll be reimagining Angel Dust for my AU, The Bed and Breakfast for Former Baddies. Disclaimer, I'm not trying to fix these designs. I don't think I'm better than the original artists. This AU is just a thought experiment that's purely for fun, so don't take it too seriously, and please just have a good time. Okay? Cool. Let's go. Also, I'm gonna warn you now that some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna be a little bit more dark than my usual content. So if you're under 13 years old, skedaddle! <laughs> I will be censoring words that I don't wanna say. In the original Hasbin Hotel, Angel Dust's life went like this. He was a member of a notorious Italian crime family based in New York. Growing up, he was mistreated by his father and older brother, and his mental health only got worse when he was drafted into the military. He died by overdosing on PCP, also known as Angel Dust. After arriving in Hell, he did whatever he needed to survive, which eventually led him to make a contract with our favorite boy, Valentino. <coughs> As you'd imagine a pimp would do, Valentino exploits Angel in every way possible. We don't exactly know how, but at some point Angel met Charlie and Baggy and moved into their hotel as their guest. He doesn't really seem to care about changing at first though, he's really only there for the free rent so he doesn't have to live with Val anymore. Of course, we don't learn most of this in the actual show, no 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 no, seeing stuff happen in the show is for babies. <laughs> <laughs> the real lore and the real way to, to teach you about a character is by making you go to their wiki and read about them. <laughs> oh, it's a problem. In my Husk video, I decided to swap his and Angel's time periods because Husk just seemed to fit the Mafia vibe better than Angel did. Since the Mafia stuff had been given to Husk, I wanted to do something completely different for Angel's backstory. Especially since Vidzi has used this Son of Mafia boss story a few too many times. Another change I wanted to make was how his story with Valentino played out. I don't think there was anything wrong with the way that they wrote it, but it is pretty intense and not something that everyone can handle, so I'll be approaching it differently. For my AU, Angel doesn't start the series under contract. He doesn't even meet Valentino until the end of the first season, so he's going to get two designs. One for when he's under contract, and one for before. We'll start with the one for season one. This design will be informed mostly by his life before he died. Between the 1960s and 1970s, when my version of Angel was alive, it was prime time for hippies. This was a counterculture movement that rejected the mainstream ideals and lifestyle of the U.S. at the time. This movement was in direct opposition to U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. Hippies weren't directly involved in politics, though. Their approach to protest was to remove themselves from the situation entirely. Their whole thing was checking out of society. They saw American society as a whole as being materialistic and repressed, and they wanted nothing to do with any of it. A big part of this culture was experimenting with communal living, holistic medicine, and drug experimentation, especially with hallucinogens. This movement was also where the phrase, make love not war, came from, so you can imagine what kind of shenanigans they were getting up to in private. Let's talk visuals. Hippies were big on being all natural. They often wore headbands, baggy clothes, and bright colors with crazy patterns. When I looked up spider feet, I saw that many spiders have tiny hook-like structures on the tips of their legs, so I turned those into makeshift fingers. When I first started designing him, I wasn't sure of what type of spider he was based on, so I used a goldenrod with a crab spider as reference. I later heard that he was based on a jumping spider, which I liked a lot better because jumping spiders tend to be very hairy. I had this idea in my mind to make Angel's legs so fluffy that they took the shape of bell bottoms, which is a pants style that many hippie men wore. Of course, there's no room for real pants now, but <laughs> you know, he's, he's modest. Nothing's showing, it's fine. No one cares about public indecency in hell anyway. <laughs> my version of Angel is very lazy. Sloth is his sin, and I wanted him to really look the part. He conforms to hippie culture not because he hates war, but because he's a lazy bum who doesn't want to work. He doesn't take care of his appearance at all. I thought a good way to convey this would be to give him a major slouch. Uh, you can convey a lot about a character just in the way that they're posed and the way that they move around. I gave his hair two big long strands in the front to really emphasize the slouch and a bit of a beard on his chin. It was pretty normal for hippies, even hippie men, to have their hair very long and often to wear beards. Uh, 
I think both of these changes make him look a, a little ugly and gross, but for this version of his design, I think that really works. Being sloppy is kind of his thing. Something I don't like about Hasbin Hotel is how likable Angel is. Now, I know that sounds like a really weird thing to say, but hear me out. Angel is such a likable character that it's hard for the viewer to understand how he ended up in hell at all. Yeah, he's super duper lusty, but we learn in episode 4 that this is just a mask that he puts on to deal with the pain of what Valentino puts him through. We never learn anything about what he was like before within the actual show. We can assume that he fell down to hell because of stuff that he did while in the Mafia, but you would only know about that if you read the wiki or attended the live streams. A casual fan isn't gonna know about that stuff. If you can't figure out something about the lore that is as major as a character's backstory from watching this show, you have not written a very good show and you need to try again. <laughs> and I know that I know that sounds like kind of harsh criticism because this is one of my favorite shows to ever be made ever, but let's just be honest, this is a smoldering trash heap that smells like flowers. <laughs> It's not good, it, but it is enjoyable. <laughs> there was also a massive missed opportunity in the episode where Charlie went to heaven to see heaven's perspective. This trial scene could have been the perfect opportunity to make it clear why Angel is in hell in the first place and why he's irredeemable in heaven's eyes. The prosecution could have brought up how Angel agreed to go in the club in the first place when he knew he had a problem, or how he could have brought up how Angel gleefully killed people at the end of episode 4 without Heaven's express permission, both of which would have been against the rules. The prosecution could have said that common human decency isn't enough to get into Heaven after you've already fallen, but and that people that have hurt others in the way that Angel hurt others when he was alive and in the Mafia don't deserve to change because it wouldn't be fair to their victims. Does the prosecution say any of these things? No, of course not, because the prosecution is made up of Adam, and only Adam, and Adam is a big dumb idiot who, in this show, who went in with zero planning. It kind of seems like the writers didn't take time to step back and consider what their characters looked like from the perspective of their villain at all, because Adam wasn't the only one in that trial scene. There were plenty of other characters there that could, that are smart that could have brought up those points too, so we can't use the excuse of Aim Adam just being dumb. <laughs> they just keep on taking the most shallow and simple and black and white ways to write their story as possible. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on this big long rant. Anyway, this whole thing to say that I wanted to be clear and obvious why Angel is down here in the first place. At the end of my husband redesign videos, I've been writing summaries of for the episodes as I would rewrite them. I had Angel appear for the first time at the end of episode 1, and so far he's been a pretty minor character. I've characterized him as being lazy and having a hard time taking accountability, even for minor things as just like jokes that didn't go over quite right. He doesn't care about changing. The only reason why he's there at all is because rent is 5 bucks and breakfast is free so he doesn't need to spend nearly as much time working to keep himself living comfortably. He spends most of his time either doing drugs or sleeping, so he's going to be spending a lot of his time in his room. So yeah, Season 1 Angel will not be that major of a character, and good thing too, because Season 1 Angel is a pain in the booty. <laughs> this will give us more time to focus on building up other characters, especially Serpentius, so that the season finale hits harder. In the episodes I've rewritten thus far, I've had Angel improve in very subtle, minute ways and increased his desire to change. Of course he doesn't want to change enough to put in any actual effort, but the seeds have been planted. Angel's season 1 arc is going to be disappointing. I want to use Angel to discuss themes of drug abuse, black sliding, and enabling. While living at the bed and breakfast, he's going to make some minor improvements and slowly get a little bit better. He won't use drugs as often and he'll start being nice and trying a little bit, but then that hard day is going to hit at the end of the season and he's going to backslide hard. When Heaven decrees that Adam and Eve are going to attack the bed and breakfast, Angel will abandon the house and go back to what he was doing before the house happened, being a homeless druggie. This will make him easy pickings for Valentino to seduce and manipulate him into a contract. Speaking of, here's the design for what he belongs to Valentino. 
I started by completely changing the way that he holds himself. When working under Valentino, he will act a lot more like the angel dust that we saw in the original show. He'll be super flirty and over the top because that's how he thinks he's supposed to act and it helps him ignore everything that's being done to him. I shaved down most of his body hair, all of his facial hair, and gave his hair a trim. I kept it fluffy at the joints and chest though, cause cute. <laughs> I kept the huge boots that he wears in the show. For the rest of his outfit though, I was inspired by the black outfit that was used in the Poison song, but simplified it quite a bit. I wanted his outfit to seem like a bit of an afterthought, so that all of the detail and attention is on his physical body. I wanted to strip him entirely of everything that made him unique and gave him a personality before and make him entirely into what Valentino wants, just a generic prawn star. I apologize for the censoring. YouTube. <laughs> I decided in my video on Husk that when a sinner is taken under contract, that they take on some of the physical characteristics of their owners. For Alistair's souls, they get the same skull face and dark eyes that he gets. For, for Valentino's souls, they'll get his antenna and pastel red eyes. For colors, I kept all of the pink stripes the same, but I got rid of all of the blue stripes. Angel doesn't get the luxury of being lazy underneath Valentino's control. All of his blue stripes have been replaced with either black or Valentino's red for the pride that he pretends to have. Something else I don't like about Has Been Hotel is that the episode where the audience discovers the abuse is episode 4 and then he just stays stuck in that situation for in-universe months. This really bothers me because Charlie and Husk both find out that Angel is being used in that episode and then nobody does anything about it. According to the episodes that come after, the next few episodes that follow are supposed to span over the course of several months, with Angel presumably being abused for that entire length of time. This is absolutely infuriating to me. I get that sometimes people get stuck in abusive situations and there's nothing you can do about it, but Charlie is the princess of hell. Even if she doesn't have the respect she needs to throw her weight around, I'm sure she could get her daddy to do it for her. In my opinion, as soon as the show informed us of what was happening to Angel, getting him out of that situation needed to become priority number one. This is another reason why I've chosen not to put Angel under contract until season two. Then we can focus all of our attention onto his problems and getting the, him out of them. I actually have an idea for how Charlie can get him out of his contract. We see in the show that the contract between Valentino and Angel Dust is only signed with their first names. This means that their contract is not legally binding. Though Charlie is a therapist and not a lawyer, she is still a princess, so she does have an intermediate understanding of solving contract disputes. So we could get like a trial episode where Charlie helps Angel sue. So here is my full backstory for Angel Dust. Angel Dust was raised in a traditional 1960s American family. He had two parents, an older brother, and a twin sister. All of these characters are in the show, they're just in the background and were not acknowledged by the writing at all. <laughs> so I'm not just pulling stuff out of my butt. They were a very religious family and seemed like they had everything together from the outside. From the inside though, everything was falling apart. Angel's older brother was always the favorite child, which left Angel feeling very emotionally neglected. Emotional neglect doesn't get talked about nearly as much as actual abuse because it's not as shocking, and I think that's a shame. Emotional neglect can be extremely damaging to a person's development. While neither of Angel's parents neglected him on purpose, their inaction still had a major effect on him. Because of Angel's strained relationship with his parents, he didn't see that their rules were all made out of a place of love. Angel rejected his parents' religion entirely. He ran off with a hippie he had fallen in love with when he was about 17, and not like a predatory relationship, they were both just too young to know what they were getting into, and he spent the rest of his life running from or ignoring his problems. He later died of an overdose. Now, why is Sloth a sin at all? Why would it matter if an angel is lazy? Allow me to explain. People who are raised knowing Heaven's rules are held to a much higher standard than those who don't. Heaven isn't like the US. If you don't know the rules, they don't expect you to follow them. But if you do know better and purposely choose to ignore them, then there's an issue. But Sloth being a sin isn't purely on principle. Heaven isn't a place where you get to do nothing all day. It is an extremely relaxing place, but you st still need to, like, actually, you know, work. <laughs> 
There is no currency in heaven, which means that it is absolutely imperative that everyone pull their own weight. For example, when Adam and Eve aren't busy with extermination stuff, they're simple rice farmers. <laughs> so is Angel an evil person? No, not really. He's just kind of a jerk. And his laziness is incredibly selfish. If he were in heaven, he wouldn't do anything at all to serve society and become a burden on everyone else around him. That wouldn't be much of a problem if it was only Angel doing that, but if they let one sloth sinner in, then they would need to let all of them in. That many unproductive people in heaven would cause great strain on the rest of the hardworking angels that live up there, and it wouldn't be fair to make all of those angels support the worthless. Also, you gotta be really lazy in order to fall to hell for sloth. <laughs> <laughs> like to the point where you're forcing the people around you to support you in ways that damage your lives. If your laziness only affects you, no big deal. But when it starts to make other people's lives worse, like if you're a parent who's neglecting their children, or you're a hoarder that has a space so disgusting that it becomes a health risk to your neighbors, that's the kind of laziness that's worthy of hell. We're not, we're not talking about people who just didn't go to church one day or took too much time off of work or something. Now, normally, at the end of these videos, I like to include an episode rewrite, but, uh, not this time. <laughs> I'm going through a breakup, and I'm very sad. So, uh, thank you everyone so much for watching, and a special thank you to my patrons Mercer Scott Holt and Jay Draws. You two are the greatest. If you want to support me, you can join my Patreon. I also take commissions, which you can order on Ko-fi, Instagram, or Discord. Here are my prices. I'll see you all next week in a super cool video about an empty warrior. See ya!